Okay, in this lesson, I'm going to introduce the idea of limits, and I'm going to do this uh, uh, in a graphical and numerical sense. So let's uh, consider the function of x cubed minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Okay, so on the numerator, we have uh, a difference of two cubes. Okay, so we can factor this as x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1, all divided by x minus 1. Okay, and canceling, canceling out the x minus 1 term, okay, we end up getting x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, and so the image that you see to the right, this is, this is the graph. Okay, this is the graph of x squared plus x plus 1 uh, with the whole at x equals to 1. Okay, so we get the whole here because uh, when we cancel x minus 1, uh, that's, you're canceling out, basically you're canceling out uh, the uh, discontinuity. Okay, all right, and so that leaves us a hole in the graph. Okay, so the original function uh, looks like a parabola with a hole in it where the hole is located at x equals 1 and y equals 3. So in order to understand the behavior of the graph at x equals to 1, uh, we're going to uh, build two tables. Okay, The first table is we're going to let x approach 1 from the left. The second table we're going to let x approach 1 from the right side. Okay, And then we're going to observe in both tables, we're going to see what's happening to the y values. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, construct our tables. Okay. Okay, so. So in the, in this column, this is going to be the X values. And then in this column, this will be the Y values. So I want to pick values approaching one. Okay, so they're going to get closer and closer to 1. So we want to pick values uh, very close or very near to 1. Okay, so I'm going to say 0 0.9, then 0 0.99, then 0 0.999, and then 9999. Okay, so then we're going to plug these x, y's in back into our function. Okay, so we can, we can plug these back into here, into the x squared plus x plus 1 function, okay? So then we're going to get 2.71, okay, 2.9701, 2.99701, and then 2.9997. Okay, so we can easily see that as x is approaching 1, okay, from the, from the left side, and so that's what the minus here indicates, uh, the corresponding y values is approaching 3. Okay, so we can see that numerically. All right. Okay. And if you look on the graph here, okay, you can see that, right, as x approaches 1, Okay, so as x approaches 1 from the left, the y value, the, the, the graph is approaching the y value of 3. Okay, so let's build another table. Okay, in this case, our x, we want the x values to approach 1 from the right side. Okay, all right, so let's start with 1.01, okay? And I wanna get closer and closer to one, okay? The next one will be 1.001, okay? So again, we want to gradually approach one, okay? And then 1.0001, and then we have, uh, next one we can use is 1.0001, okay? 
All right, and then we're going to take those again and evaluate them at the function that we have. Okay, so we're going to get 3.03 0.03 Zero zero one, three point zero 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 three, and then finally we have three point zero zero, and let's see one more zero and then three. Okay, so again, as x approaches one from the right side. The corresponding y, the corresponding values of y are getting closer and closer to three. Okay. Okay. So again, going back to our figure here. Okay. As x is as x approaches one from the right, the y the y values are getting closer and closer to three. Okay. All right. Okay. So. So looking at the, just looking on the x-axis, this is what we have here, okay? So this is, this is for x, okay? So, okay, so we have 0.9, okay? So we had 0.9, okay? And then point, let's say 99, or let's do it like this, 0.9, and then 0.99, Okay, and then over here we had uh, one point, let's say zero one, and then one point zero zero one. Okay. Okay. So the we're letting so just looking in terms of x as x. Right. So we're letting on this side we're letting x get closer and closer to one from the left. Okay. And over here, we're letting x approach one from the right side. Okay. Okay. And then we're seeing what's happening to the y value. Okay. So mathematically, this is the idea of the limit. Okay. So we can, so from the first table, we can rewrite this as using the limit notation. This is nothing more than just saying the limit as x approaches one from the left of our function. It's going to be equal to three, okay. And over here, okay, this is going to be for uh, the limit as x approaches one from the right of our function, and that's also approaching three. Okay. So in this case, the the left hand limit and the right hand limits are both equal. Okay. So this is we call this the left hand limit because x is approaching from the left. And this is the right hand limit. Since x is approaching one from the right side. So overall, okay, the limit of our function as x approaches one, okay, is three, okay. So in other words, for the overall limit to exist, the left and right hand limit must be, right, they must be equal. They have to approach the same point, okay? And this is the general idea uh, of the limit, okay? All right. So one thing to notice from this, okay, uh, an observation that you should notice is that the limit exists here. Um, but yet the function value at one does not exist. Okay. All right. So, all right. Okay. So, so you so the limit can exist, but the function value may not exist at that point. Okay. So, uh, we have to always keep this in mind. Okay. So, just a little note here. And we can clearly see that at x equals one, right? We get a hole there. Okay, so um, so f of one for our original function does not exist. Okay, but the limit exists. Okay, and this is going to uh, 
uh, be a very important part uh, in defining the continuity of a function at a point later on. Okay.